Call it Paul Bubba Sparks. Booty, yeah, booty, booty, rock and never wear. Booty, booty. Good morning, YouTube. We are on day seven as far as for the Vlogmas. 18 more days until Christmas, you guys. It's going to be 18 more days until Christmas. And you guys, make sure you guys stay tuned as far as for this video I have planned for you guys. What's up YouTube? So basically in this video, it's gonna talk about questions that every phlebotomist should be able to answer correctly. So to get right into the video, I'm not gonna hold y'all long. The first question you always wanna answer is, um, so the first question is gonna be, what is the correct way to identify the patient before drawing blood? This is an important question because at the end of the day, before you start the procedure or before you do any type of specimen collection for the patient, you always wanna make sure you identify who the patient is, make sure that you know exactly who you're dealing with. So that'll be what you'll have to do as far as for um, doing that. So the correct way to identify the patient, pretty much identifying the patient is by asking them to state their first name, address, or date of birth. Usually, most likely it's the first name and date of birth. Now, you always wanna make sure that you check for the date of birth because most of the time with phlebotomy, somebody may have the same last name, same first name, and you know you just gotta pay attention to those type of things but you always always want to make sure you identify the patient correctly um, sometimes you can also have them spell their last name um, if possible sometimes compare the information given with the information that's on the order because sometimes on that requisition form it has all the information right there so you want to make sure that everything is correct it can be so terrible if you do not identify the correct patient that can lead to so much mistakes so for number one, always identify the patient. That's the best way to do it. The easiest way to identify them is first, last name, date of birth, and if you need to, social security number. That's what I would do. The second question is gonna be, how can you protect fainting patients from an injury? So whenever it comes to phlebotomy, how can you protect the patient whenever they may faint or pass out? What position would you put them in? So for the most part, Whenever drawing blood, you always want to put the patient in supine position. Supine will be basically laying on their back. So whenever you have them in supine position, that can pretty much access them to whenever they need to like throw up and kind of lean over to throw up or if they pass out, they can still be unconscious, but at the same time, you'll still be able to draw your blood and do what you need to do for them. Make sure that they're just not standing up or anything like that. You just want to make sure that they're positioned correctly. Um, never leave the patient's side through the entire procedure because at the end of the day you never know what may happen now I never had a scenario where I had to literally like get immediate attention to a patient now when I was working at the plasma center as a phlebotomist I done seen a lot of stuff but it didn't necessarily it didn't necessarily happen when I stuck the donor so I done seen all types of stuff I done seen the lady had uh, um, panic attack inside the chair I done seen someone basically pass out and then woke back up as if something didn't happen. So it's all types of things you see, but you just gotta prepare yourself for those type of things. Um, ask the patient, has they ever have they ever um, fainted during a blood draw? And you just wanna sometimes ask them, are they feeling okay? So throughout the blood draw, just be like, hey, you still here with me? So how's everything going? You know, just try to talk to them as much as you can. Question three, this one is going to be, this is so important, you guys. How many times should you stick a person when it comes to phlebotomy so whenever you stick someone for phlebotomy I always tell them to the most two but you always want to try to get them on the first stick if you're really good at seeing and locating you want to try to get them on the first stick now how many times should you stick a patient if you miss the vein I feel like to the most it should be one or two I feel like you should never go three times with sticking a patient if you go more than three times with sticking a patient it's something wrong with you it's not nothing wrong with the patient it's something wrong with you because now you're playing with their arm trying to fish through to see this and see that when really the patient is getting you know some people have patients where they can really sit there and let you do that but you do have some patients who will not sit there at all so my word of advice never stick a donor or a patient three times always stick them either one or two times if you cannot see what you're doing get a phlebotomist that knows what they're doing because at the end of the day the patient leaves out with bruises all over their arm on top of that they'll be sure to remember your face and who you are on the person that did it and you don't want to be one of those type of people that's in that category so i definitely want to make sure that i like i say one time is best two times to the most never three times that's what i would see of it as as far as for when it comes to sticking a donor always get a phlebotomist that know what they're doing if you 
literally deep down inside feel you can't do it because I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you when I was working as a phlebotomist at a plasma center and I knew I couldn't get the um the stick I will always refer to the senior phlebotomist or head phlebotomist that's in charge like letting them know like hey look this person got skinny veins I cannot get it like I really need your help it doesn't hurt to do that sometimes it actually saves you when you do that sometimes the fourth question is going to be can you puncture the first vein whenever you see it so can you puncture the first good vein whenever you see it so most of the time most people what they like to do is as soon as they see your arm they'll be like oh you got a good vein i can get that some people you can do that with but you can never tell how good the vein is unless you put a tourniquet on some people can have pumped up veins but their blood flow is not so easy because they don't drink a lot of water so my thing that i would say to you is that um you just want to kind of be questionable as far as for what the patient usually do because some people can have good veins but they don't take care of their body as much so it's like say for instance you stick the needle in there the blood flow a little bit then it stops and then now kind of worry you then you get to pull them back and it's still not flowing so those type of things you want to like notice but all i can say is you can always determine a good vein whenever you look at someone's arm like you can you think you could determine a vein but until you actually stick the person you can really tell whether it's a good vein but for the most part once you get that tourniquet on you can pretty much tell i feel like you should be fine what do you do when the patient experience expresses shooting pain so whenever there's shooting pain um as far as for the patient i always like to make sure that i try to finish doing what i'm doing remove that tourniquet and you know kind of just stop on everything on here it says basically pain during a vena puncture can be attempted even when it comes to numbingness you can sometimes put that in your hands or fingers but the draw must be discontinued immediately what you want to do is after that first draw is discontinued you want to try to like stop a little bit and then you're going to try to attempt the second time when you attempt the second time probably try a different location so may try a different arm try a lower side on the corner of the arm it all depends try a different vein that you may know sometimes people like to get the veins on their hands as well too um because these are symptoms of basically like the nerve injury you can always have a different reaction with different patients so some people may get either too hot when they start sweating so bad some people may fall out it all just depends but whenever you feel any shooting pain or the patient feels shooting pain while you're doing the procedure or any type of um um blood work for the patient just immediately stop let them kind of catch their breath and then do what you need to do next thing is going to be how much time passes between when you release pressure and apply the bandage so basically this pretty much deals with releasing the tourniquet applying the gauze so it won't have any blood drawn out and make sure that you apply the band-aid so if your staff lets patients bend over their arms as a substitute for direct pressure i feel like that's bad because you can kind of mix in the blood and stuff like that like most people as soon as we got done with the um blood draws at the um phlebotomy center some people as soon as we take the needle out they're so quick to put the thing right here and just be like this all the time and what i like for them to do most of the time is just keep this on here apply a lot of pressure as much as you can just kind of let your arm relax let your arm relax kind of flex it in like that a little bit but don't just be so quick to be like this and people just be like it's just so much like you want to apply pressure but don't just do it overdo it and then one thing about it as well too whenever you're done drawing blood if you lift up the band-aid and you see or shall i say the gauze when you lift up the gauze and you see just a little bit of blood right there and you're like oh i stopped bleeding and then next thing you know you're pouring all out you want to make sure you have the right precautions as far as for that too that's why we always tell you to apply pressure make sure you apply as much pressure as you can i usually tell people to leave the band-aid on for at least like 15 to 30 minutes before leaving because you never know what may happen there's plenty of donors that will be bleeding out like crazy by the time we're done wrapping them up and the blood then came through because either they're just it wasn't placed on right you just never know what the issue may be um, you are not to let patients bend their arm. That's standards precaution. You are not to let patients bend their arm up and, you know, just so they can make sure that the bleeding has stopped. Whenever you draw blood and you lift the gloves, basically you have to wait at least like 10 seconds of observation. It's kind of like what I told you guys. Like I kind of like to observe the patient before letting them leave after blood work. So that's very important. Basically, it's not a specific time frame. Most people say 10 seconds, but everybody's blood level is different. I would give it at least another five, three to five minutes before leaving and before taking the band-aid off and the gauze off, give it another 15 to 30 minutes. That's what I would do just to be on the safe side. Okay. And this is going to leave me with my last. Yeah, I think that's my last one. Let me check to make sure. everything on here.
that. So basically, that'll be all the questions to pretty much that every phlebotomist must answer correctly. You don't have to pretty much go too far in depth, but make sure that you give enough information so your employer knows that you pretty much get an understanding when it comes to phlebotomy. No one wants to go through a terrible experience when it comes to phlebotomy. Most people are so scared of needles, so you don't want to make their experience even more scarier. Um, yeah, so for the most part, I hope this pretty much helped. If anybody is on their interview for phlebotomy, let me know what you think about this video. If you guys do need other videos as far as for phlebotomy, don't forget to comment down below and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Y'all all stay safe. Peace.